Okay, I'm on uh, the computer talking with Cassandra. This is our second time doing the Soul Code. And she's going to mix it with, this is Cassandra Greer. We're going to mix it with some uh, body code and other stuff. So here I am. I'm her guinea pig. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so today's topic is um, working on the HPA axis. HPA axis, okay. Yes, and this is the uh, team the between the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and the adrenals. Okay. And the reason why I'm focusing on this right now is I've been uh, paying attention to um, what some of the more well-known functional medicine doctors have been saying. And there's a particular naturopath, his name is Chris Kresser, and he's recently gave a, um, a webinar with some of his colleagues, and they talked specifically uh, about this HPA axis, which I'd heard of before and kind of knew of, but never really took seriously. Uh, but now that I've seen this webinar and read some stuff, I am taking it very seriously. And at least on the physical level, Chris Kresser uh, says that um, the HPA axis and having a healthy one is essential for recovery from any chronic illness. And that includes um, skin problems, autoimmune disease, depression, anxiety, infertility, uh, pretty much you name it. If you go to the Wikipedia website, uh, webpage for the HPA axis, you'll get a lot of very interesting things. Because um, basically what this HPA axis does is it controls the reaction you have to any kind of stress. And then it's not just our perceived stress, like, oh my gosh, I'm sitting in traffic and and it's not moving, oh, this is so stressful, or oh, you know, I missed the bus and I'm going to be late, this is uh, going to be stressful. Um, but um, uh, there's other types of stressors which we don't um, often think about as stressors per se. I mean, when you think about it, yes, but we don't really... Uh, think about them as much as perceived stress, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, so um, there's three others besides perceived stress. There's blood sugar dysregulation. So if your blood sugar is too low or too high, this is a huge stress on your system. Um, and your circadian uh, rhythm, if it's in disruption, this is a huge disruptor, a huge stressor. And, you know, because our bodies have you know, developed over the years, uh, evolved, as they say, you know, according to this 24-hour uh, light-darkness cycle. And, um, you know, whenever we put artificial light into the uh, equation, that messes up our system, especially computers and iPads and smartphones, because they emit uh, what's called blue light. And our body kind of thinks that this is real light, so regular daylight. And so it kind of confuses the circadian rhythm. And, uh, you know, going across time zones will do it. Not getting enough bright light during the day. So not getting out during the day will confuse your body. Um, and then that leads to, or can lead to, you know, sleep problems. And then the fourth uh, stressor that uh, Chris Kresser talked about is inflammation. Uh, the inf inflammation in the body, and, um, you know, talk, and there's different causes for that. There's, for example, if your gut flora is out of whack, if you don't have the right biome, biome, however you say it in English, uh, the right buggies in your gut, um, there you're going to have a tendency to inflammation, especially in the gut area. If you get injured, I mean, even just working out and tearing some of your muscle uh, muscle cells or um, muscle fibers, this causes inflammation. And of course, disease can cause inflammation. And um, I'm sure that there's other things as well. And all of these things um, bring the body out of homeostasis. And homeostasis is when the body's in balance uh, with everything it's supposed to be doing. So this homeostasis thing is, you know, pretty much the, 
supposed to be our goal uh, if we want to get well. So let's see if there's anything else in my notes. Um, yes, if you are, if, and I bet <laughs> probably everybody who listens to this, if they, if you were to raise your hand, if you have any of these four perceived, uh, before stressors, perceived stress, blood sugar stress, circadian rhythm stress, or inflammation stress, I think everybody would raise their hands to at least one, if not more of these. Um, so this, this HPA axis, it governs our reaction to stress and how the body, uh, you know, what the body does under the stress. Uh, but long time stress, long term stress, kind of trains the body to always be under stress. So if you're, you know, if you have any of these stressors, these four stressors, over the long term, uh, this this uh, makes it worse because then your body learns how to be stressed, and not how to be unstressed. So, um, this is a. Uh, you know, it seems very, very important. And I you know in my life, I have, <laughs> I have all four of those stressors to one uh, point or the other. Now, perceived stress, this can um, easily be uh, dealt with uh, using, you know, emotional release techniques like, you know, body code, emotion code, EFT, body talk, whatever. Uh, even Chinese medicine and things, and uh, blood sugar can be helped with this. All of these things can be helped, um, but it also includes lifestyle changes that are important. However, if we are stuck in our ruts, um, it's always good to work on a person energetically to help them make the decision to change their lifestyle. And that's what I'm working on right now with people. So. What I've done, um, oh, another thing, another thing, you know, people talk about adrenal fatigue and all that and being tired. Uh, one of the things that they pointed out uh, that I think is important to realize is that you can't feel your cortisol levels. So that's your adrenals um, uh, manufacture cortisol out of cholesterol. By the way, cholesterol is very important for all sorts of things, including cortisol, to help us deal with uh, good stress. You cannot, you can't feel it really. And a lot of people think, oh, you know, I feel it, you know, because I'm tired and I don't have enough energy. But actually, you can still have enough energy and your HPA axis be in disruption, you know, be, be uh, not functioning properly or even malfunctioning. And leading, uh, you know, creating the groundwork to um, whatever kind of chronic disease that your body's susceptible to. So, um, so this is what I've been doing with my clients lately. I've kind of gotten, I don't have a nice little graphic for it, but uh, I've been working on people's HPA axes as a package. Um, on, with uh, different qualifications, uh, which are often used in the body code. Like in the body code, you might ask, is an organ happy? Okay, is it balanced? Is it functioning properly? And so I kind of have uh, made my own little chart, and probably I'll make a nice official looking one one of these days, where I'm going to check on how happy the HPA axis is and fully 100% permanent. Permanent meaning that it will take another outside um, uh, influence to knock it out of uh, permanent again. So there's not going to be something from the inside of a person that would knock it out of, uh, you know, out of being happy. So I have uh, happiness, being balanced, fully functional, fully healthy, optimized, and also whether or not um, it has a proper um, um, connection to the spirit body and also to the physical body. So there's a lot of things here that can be checked, and so far I haven't been able to do everything 
in one session. Um, but usually it can get pretty far in one session and in the end only have to release oh, so far like at top seven trapped uh, emotions. And maybe with some other things uh, uh, with it because this goes so deep this HPA axis is an underlying, um, is a foundation for how the rest, our vagus nerve, for example, um, is directly related to this. And we know the vagus nerve, uh, when it's freaked out, you're going to have a lot of organ dysfunction, um, anxiety, you know, stress, depression, and so on. Uh, but the vagus nerve is directly connected to the HPA axis. So it's actually, I feel, more important to make sure the HPA axis is, you know, in top form before you even work on the vagus nerve. And, and I really think that um, uh, a less than optimal HPA axis is even responsible for allowing um, heart walls to develop. To at least to a certain extent, and by making the HPA axis happy and fully functional and everything, will um, actually take care of a lot of root causes for developing a heart wall. So you might still have a heart wall, but if this is taken care of, the heart wall, when it's removed, will be easier to remove, quicker to remove, and with fewer, if any, processing symptoms. So, um, uh, before we start, and I've just kind of done this blah, um, do you have any questions, Tim? No, sounds good. Okay, so then let's start out by finding my pen. And um, first, so I'll just do things the way that I usually do, and. Um, um, by putting up full shields in the sight of pure right perfect light, the greatness of pure right perfect light, for you and me and the whole situation. Okay, 10, 20, and I'll be muscle testing the situation. 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, 90, 100. Okay, I'm in, you're in, the whole situation's in. Tim, may I have your permission to muscle test you? Fully? Yes. Okay, Tim, Tim, Tim. May I, so I'm talking to your subconscious. May I have full permission to muscle test you fully? 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Okay. And Tim, uh, if necessary, so I'm asking your subconscious, may I uh, do stuff for you by proxy if necessary? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, another question that I always uh, use uh, when I do energy work is to ask the subconscious if it feels fully safe working on this topic. Okay, and I always do this after putting up shields because shields are going to block off any possible negative influence uh, from the outside and so the chances are better to get a yes from the subconscious because it's not being influenced. So, tip, tip, tip. Uh, uh, do you feel fully safe with doing, working on your HPA axis today? Yes. Okay, you're kind of excited in there. <laughs> okay. Um, also, uh, the body code also says check for the immune system level. And I'm going to do that as well. Um, most of the time, that's the same as feeling safe, but every once in a while I get a difference. Uh, I haven't figured out why, but um, so I'm learning. So, Tim, 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 your full immune system is, is it 100% right now? It is. Okay, so you're fine there. Now, let's go, I'll, I'll check your whole HPA axis. Is it, um, how fully happy is it? 100 per, you know, how fully happy is it permanently? 97%. Okay. I'm going to write that down so I don't forget. And now I'm going to ask why. <laughs> what is the absolute core, key core, critical, uh, active thing that keeps you 
from having a 100% happy um, oops, HP access. Let me see here. It kicked me out of there. I'm going to go. Okay, body code. That's what I thought. Can you see my body code yes. page? Yes. Okay. So, it is on the right side. It's on the left side. Energies. Okay, is it left side, right side? Dun, dun. Emotional. And usually these are pretty, these are childhood stuff, childhood things that come up. Is it a trapped emotion? It's a trapped emotion. Is it column A? It's column B. Odd, even. Uh, two, four, six. Pride, shame, shock. Is it yours? No. Do we need to know any more about it? So it's good to know when it happened. Um, this happened before age five, before age 10, um, about between age nine and 10. Okay. So let me ask your subconscious if it's ready to be released safely. It is. So we're going to release it with three. One, two, three. Okay. And then I'm going to check how fully it's out of your field. 97, 98, 99, 100. 100% out of your field. And now I'm going to check, this is a soul code uh, step, how full is the light coming through after the release of this trapped emotion? 90, 90%, okay? Well, we want 100%, because if it's only 90%, that means um, that 10% can invite back another trapped emotion or worse, okay? So, and then I'll go over to so, why is this 90% and not 100%? Call them A, B, C, on even two, cutting an attachment between one or more internal points. So that is, can be, it's usually a spirit-spirit connection, like your spirit heart with your spirit mind or something, okay? Uh, in this case, that's what it is. So, and how many strokes of the magnet uh, do I need to get that reconnected fully? 30. So I'm just going to go on the small of my back because it's easier than always going over my head. Okay, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 90, 100. So that's fully connected. And now what I like to do too as well is because this was you know, disconnected when you were relatively young and it hasn't been developing over the years. So let's see if it would like to be uh, supported and maybe protected. Yeah, so I'm going to do 10 for support and 10 for protection. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so now, and that's done. How full is the light coming through now after releasing that trapped emotion? 100%. This is what we want. Now I'll go back to how happy your HPA axis is. It's now 100% happy, permanently. Cool. So I will put a check mark there. Now, next thing is how balanced is it? Sometimes when you do one thing in one area, it helps the rest. So let's see if this has a good effect. Um, so how fully balanced 100% permanently is your HPA axis actively. 97%. Okay. I mean, the fact that you work out and stuff like that is a good thing. That helps a lot. Yeah. Keep your body and spirit working together. I've been working okay. out since I was 17. Good. Good habits. Yeah. <laughs> Not everybody has those. <laughs> I worked for health clubs from the time I was about 19 to I was about 25. I sold memberships at Family Fitness Center and a couple other health clubs. Uh-huh. So I got well, so really then you know it. how it all works. Yeah. Yeah, in Germany, they're, um, they're rather expensive. And by the week or two weeks or something, there's wow. one that's not far from here, but not in a position to afford it. So wow. I have to use the little things I've got here. I've got weights and stuff. And do lots of walks. Uh, 
because my HP axis is not, it was not doing as well as yours is. <laughs> <laughs> so um, now what is the absolute key core critical reason, active reason why it's not 100% balanced and permanently so? Okay, body code again. Okay, right side, left side energies. Left side, right side, dun, dun. emotional again. Uh, trapped emotion, heart. emotional resonance. Is it from you? Is it uh, from a family? It's not even from a family member. How long have you had this? About two years. Okay, is it uh, column A, column B? Odd, one, three, five. Conflict, credence, terror. So somehow you've absorbed some terror, okay? Uh, but not embeddedly so, just an emotional resonance. Do we need to know anything more about this? No. And we can release it then with three. One, two, three. Okay, is it fully out of your field? 60, 80, 90, 100. Okay, now, um, how full is the light uh, coming through? 97%. 97%. Why is it 97%? Motion code, body code, cell code. Okay, column A, column B, odd, even. Two, cut an attachment between internal and external points. And this is uh, usually a spirit body connection. Okay, is this above your shoulders, is it above your diaphragm, uh, hips to di it's, it's so somewhere in your stomach area. Um, it's a fascia disconnection for some reason. Okay, so how many do we need to restore this attachment to full, so let the light through? 80. Okay, this is a bunch. <laughs> Did you hurt yourself a couple of years ago? Well, I got an operation on my back. Ha! Huh. I just had, I had a little infection which they thought was cancer so they took it out okay so there's um you know i think possibly the there's a fa fascia issue because of that of yeah. course you can cut th somebody open of course you're gonna have fascia issues okay one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two eight nine twenty one two three four five six seven eight nine thirty one two three four five six seven eight nine 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 16, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 70, whatever it is, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 80. Okay, 23. So this is, because it wants so many strokes, um, for every 10 strokes with the magnet, there is a certain type, there's a level of connection. So this is a an eight level disconnection. I'm not quite sure what that means, but um, it's good to get it reconnected. 90, 95, 100, and it is. And uh, we don't need to um, protect it or uh, support it because it's strong enough as it is. Okay, now how fully balanced is, okay, is it 100%? Yes. Okay. So from releasing that emotional resonance, the light is now a hundred percent. Yep. And it's strong enough on its own. Okay. So now how fully balanced is your HPA axis permanently? A hundred percent. Now it's a hundred percent perm. So we can check mark there. So yes, it's, it's Kind of boring body code, so called stuff, but it'll hopefully. I'm hoping I have no idea how this is going to look like in the physical, but let's see. So, the next thing is function. So, how fully functional, uh, at least on the energetic level, is your HPA axis? Okay, um, and permanently 99%. Why is this not fully 100% permanently? The 
absolute key, core, critical, priority thing active. Body code again. Right side, left side, energies. They usually are, but not always. Uh, left side, right side, addictive, allergy, emotional again. Trapped emotion. Column A, column B, odd, even. Two, four, six. Right chain, shock. It's another shock. <clears throat> Is it from you? No. Is it from family? No. Uh, do we need to know from whom? No. Is it before age 10? Around age 10. So we've got two um, trapped emotions from around age 10 from that row. <clears throat> Did something happen around age 10 that was kind of heavy? Mm. You, don't, you don't have to say what it was. If you I, know. Don't, I don't know. But what did I mean, you say that? What would you say the emotion was again? Uh, this time around, it is uh, a, a shock. Sure. Both both of them are shocks. Hmm. Age ten. But they're from somebody else, not you, and not family. Yeah, I can't recall Same that. Schoolmate. Same person, actually. Interesting. Okay. Do we need to know anything more? So we can erase it with three. One, two, three. Okay, hopefully is it out of your field? A hundred. Okay. So now how full is the light coming through? Ninety, ninety-five, ninety-six, ninety-seven, ninety-nine, a hundred. Okay. And I'm going to protect it and support it with twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Good. Now your, how fully functional is your HPA axis actively? 100% perm. So we're just, we're just chugging along here. Okay, the next area is health. So how fully healthy is this and how permanently? 99%. Okay, what is the absolute key core critical reason? Active, why? This is 100% perm. And we should put body code again. Right side, left side, energies. Left side, right side, addictive, allergy, emotional. Trapped emotion. Okay, column A, column B. Odd, even, two. Failure, helplessness, hopelessness. Is it from you? It's from you. What age? Before age 5? Before age 10? 11. Around age 11. Okay. So, do we need to know anything more about it? No. Safe to release it with 3. Yes. 1, 2, 3. Okay. Fully, is it out of your field? 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. 80, 90, 100, okay? And how full is the light coming through now that it's gone? 100. Uh, do we need to, we don't need to, but we'll just do it anyway. Just support it, make it feel happier. Okay, so now it's happier. Okay, fully is 100%. Now let's go back to how fully healthy your HPA axis is permanently 100%. You're doing good. We're just coast, we're just chugging along here. Okay, and the next one is how optimized is your HPA axis? And optimization is so everything that we've done right here so far um, is just kind of normal stuff, just regular. You know, being happy, balanced, fully functional, and healthy. This is, you know, basically the minimum what we want. Optimization is um, how resilient it is, okay, uh, against um, uh, new onslaughts, uh, new stressors, I guess you could say, or new instances of stress. So, how fully Optimize is your HPA axis uh, permanently, fully permanently. 
100. Okay, so everything else has kind of helped it get better. Um, we don't need to yet do anything with that. So it's now 100%. Check mark. So now let's see how connected the system is to the spirit body side of things uh, fully and permanently. 98%. Dude, we're going to get the whole thing done today. That's why I asked you, because I knew that you were in good shape. <laughs> Afterwards, uh, we're going to check some other things. But um, So, what is the absolute key, core, critical, active reason why it's not 100% permanent? Um, emotion, emotion code. Okay. Column A. Column B. Odd, even, uh, two, four, six, pride, shame, shock again. Okay, is this yours? And this is your shock. And when did you gen when did you develop this? For age five, around age five. Okay. So something happened when you were five, and that was just a little too much. Okay, is there anything else we need to know about this? No. Can we safely release it with three? Yes. One, two, three. Okay. 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Okay. And by the way, I get your daughter did not inherit this, or any of the ones so far. Okay, how full is the light coming through? 90, 95, 100 perm. And it's, it's nice and strong, so we don't have to do anything right now. Okay, now how fully uh, attached is your HPA axis to your spirit body? 98, 99, 100. 100% 100 perm. Check mark. Okay, the next step is how um, fully connected is, is with your HPA axis um, to your physical body. Now, um, I want to make a note here. When it says connected 98%, for example, um, this does not mean it's not 100% connected. But what I found, and one of the key reasons why I developed the cell code, is that we have connections uh, between our physical body and our spiritual body. And this, this interface, and, and vice versa, and this interface is basically our soul. Um, it's, when we have a disconnection, um, that means that the light is not flowing through at all. If we have a cut in a, in a connection, there's a couple of things that can be happening here. One, um, there is an actual cut and the light is blocked. Or there is a cut and there is a trapped motion in there. Okay, that's kind of a temporary stopgap measure that the body did to try to make this connection as complete as possible. But um, trapped emotions, you know, by definition, are not pure right perfect light. Okay, they're a lower frequency, and while they're better than nothing usually, uh, they're not pure right perfect light that should be flowing between you know, from your essence to the outside and, and from the greatness of pure right perfect light from the outside inside, for example. This is something that um, the emotion code and the body code don't really go into, and I don't know how understood it is in a healer's library, but all of these trapped emotions that we have, we have them for a reason. And the reason is, is that um, we did not learn how to use our light properly as we were growing up. And so we did the next best thing, which is either take a trap negative energy that we already had or take it in from the environment, from people around us, um, to help us try to deal with the world learn how to function in the world, to build a structure to keep us going. 
um, most of the time, the absolute bottom denom lowest denominator from all of this is some sort of inherited block where we were born into the world and right from the get-go that little bit of light from our essence we had no access to and so uh, people who children who are born that don't have enough access to the light they die young okay and most of us don't uh, but unfortunately, most of us are not taught how to use our light properly. Ideally, our parents are, should be doing that, but if they've got their own issues, they don't know how. And uh, whether, you know, on a subconscious basis at any rate. And so we build these structures um, of trapped energy that's of a lesser frequency than our essence, okay? When we start pulling these trapped emotions, or you know, releasing them, and the subconscious doesn't have a problem releasing them normally if it feels safe, and energetically um, calm down enough. Um, if we just pull them willy nilly, and not enough light is available underneath, so to speak, then we will just attract more. And to fill in that slot again, because uh, the the disconnection is too much. Okay, and sometimes it's worse than a trapped emotion. It could be an addictive heart energy or something like that, um, or something bigger, uh, or worse. And so it's really important that we focus on making sure the light is coming through fully. And fully is from all sources of pure white perfect light possible. And it's not just our own or the greatness of pure white perfect light of the universe, uh, but also from our ancestors and the people around us who love us. So this is, so I'm kind of a get your light back type of person. So anyway, back to the body HPA axis connection. So how full is this connection? Um, permanent, 98, 98%. So this 98% tells me that there is some sort of trapped emotion that keeps it from being 100%. And that's what we're going to go after it, some sort of trapped energy. Okay, and is the absolute key core critical reason, active reason, is it emotion code, body code, and it's a soul code? So, then we'll go to the soul code chart. Column A, column B, odd, even, two. It's another cut and attachment between internal and external points. Okay, um, is it above your shoulders? It's above your diaphragm. So it's between your shoulders and diaphragm. Um, it's your heart your physical heart, and your spiritual heart. So there's a cut and an attachment there. It's not a full cut, uh, but we're going to get it back together. So with 20 strokes, so it's not a huge, it's not a, not a terrible, terribly um, severe one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Let go some stuff there. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So it's now fully connected. Now how full is the light when I'm coming through? 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. All right, okay. I'm just going to give it some little extra support. 10, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. Good, likes that. So We'll go back to your body HPA axis connection. It's now 100% perm. Cool. Check mark. Okay, now, so the best thing to do now, because we don't want this to go too long, is to give you the opportunity to give your whole active HPH axis to the greatness of pure at perfect light. 
And if anyone has seen the, the session we did before, what happens is that if Tim wants to, uh, if he chooses to, he gives his HPA access to the love and forgiveness of pure right perfect light that gives it on to the greatness of pure right perfect light where it's blessed and strengthened and healed as much as Tim will let it. And when and Tim can look inside of himself and see if there's anything uh, that would keep him from embracing his HPA axis back into all that he is before the greatness of pure and perfect light. And if there's anything, then he can release that. Uh, and if there's and once everything is um, um, cleared, then he can receive this back into his essence and all of the, you know all that he is. So it's not just there; it's also his whole body. And this creates a circuit of light between his essence and his body and the greatness of pure at perfect light in back. And this is a circuit that cannot be removed or damaged or injured in any way. Uh, the only thing that can happen to it is if Tim chooses to go against this light, which is highly unlikely since he's a big light man. Um, so, Tim, are you ready? I'm ready. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away now. <laughs> so, you can, and I, I often do this as a visualization uh, with different people. So, for example, if uh, Tim, you want to go through the visualization? Okay, yes. See how that works. So, get comfy and close your eyes. And when you're ready, I'd like you to visualize your HPA axis. Now, now tell everyone hand. again, H is a uh, hyperthalamus. hyperthalamus. A is... These are, the hypothalamus is a major gland in yeah. the center of your brain. Yeah, for balance um, and hormones and... All sorts of things. Yeah. Then your pituitary, pituitary, which is also like right underneath it, I believe, and is also in charge of all sorts of yeah. um, hormones, like growth hormones and fertility hormones and all sorts of things. All this, you can read about this at Wikipedia. Yeah. And then the adrenals, adrenals okay. these are glands that kind of sit on top of your kidneys. Yeah, okay. And uh, all of the hormones that these glands um, put out, um, they kind of, they communicate with each other somehow. Um, and the signals that they give each other to, um, basically controls how your body responds to stress. And the four major stressors are perceived stress, you know, it's all in, you know, in your head stuff, um, blood sugar disruptions, circadian rhythm dis the, uh, disruptions, and inflammatory disruptions. Those are the four main things that Chris Kresser, the naturopath, uh, mentioned. Okay? And so by getting your HPA axis as happy and in the light as possible, um, this will help well, anybody who does this control stress better or respond to stress in a more healthy way uh, and help them make choices that can lead to better lifestyle choices like eating properly so the blood sugar doesn't go all over the place. Um, and not forgetting to eat or not eating too much. Um, also, getting to bed on time at night, not staying up to all hours. Uh, you know, with your face in a in a computer where that blue light is, and also that um, the immune system can deal with in inflammatory in issues easier, more easy, easy more easily, uh, like injury uh, and disease as well as um, helping the body be more welcome to the good bacteria that you need in your digestive system and more resilient against the bad bacteria, okay, or fungus, for example, um, that everybody has but can get the upper hand if you're not careful, especially if you have blood sugar issues. So it all kind of all works together. So 
So you're sitting there with your eyes closed okay. and visualizing your HPA axis in your hands. And so this will this will be a symbolic thing, most likely. And if you look at your hands, what is the symbol for your HPA axis? So you let people know. Symbol. So what does it look like? Some people it's a box. Some people it's a ball. Some people... I'm just, yeah, I'm getting a black, a black box. Like, I close my eyes, I see the computer screen, but it's like a black screen. Okay, so it's like, say it's a black box. Yeah. Now, it doesn't mean that it's a bad box because it's black. It just kind of means I would interpret this as you don't exactly know what this does. It's like, you know, the black box yeah. solution to things. <laughs> and so you're not quite sure what it does, but it's a good thing. It's the black box solution. Okay? Think out of the box. So, so, so you're, you're right there. And to the front of you, a couple of hands come out of the light to help you. And um, giving this, excuse me for the drilling, um, give this box to these hands which represent the love and forgiveness of pure white, perfect light. Okay. And if you have problems giving the whole thing, you can ask these hands to help take it for you. Okay, I gave it to them. Okay, and so you know you've given it fully when your hands are down at your side again, your spiritual hands. Yeah. Okay, so you can just uh, walk up a little bit to the front where the light is, these hands will, uh, if you let them, you can ask them to, give this box, your HPA axis box, to the greatness of pure right perfect light. And possibly hands will come out of the light again, symbolically, and take this box for you. Okay, they took it. Okay. And so now, to get ready to receive the box back, you know, right now it's being blessed and strengthened and healed as much as your subconscious will allow it. Um, look into your heart. Is there anything in your heart that would keep you from receiving, from embracing this box back and all that you are before pure at perfect light? No, nothing. Wonderful. Okay. So when you're ready, when you're fully ready, you can put out your hands okay. and receive back what Pure Right Perfect Light has to give you here. <laughs> it's no longer black screen, it's all bright. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, that's what happens. It's a bright, a bright screen now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you take that bright screen and put it into your chest. <laughs> And uh, embrace it fully with love and joy, okay? Because cool. your HPA axis loves you <laughs> yeah. and is trying to support you the best that it knows how. And it's got a little extra support from Pure Right Perfect Light. Perfect. And the love and forgiveness of Pure Right Perfect Light can help you. So if you need help uh, embracing this and all that you are, and not just in your essence but in your body, you can ask the love and forgiveness of pure at perfect light and let the hands come out and like one hand on your chest and one hand on your back to help you fully receive your HPA axis back. Okay. Okay, and you know that you've fully embraced it uh, with love and joy when your hands are down at your side again, your spiritual hands, and the hands of the love and forgiveness of pure at perfect light have gone back into the light. Okay. There might be other hands there too, helping along too. When all the hands are gone, then you know you have allowed the circuit to complete. It's all complete. Okay. So, how does that feel, by the way? How does it feel to be one of the beautiful people? <laughs> I was just listening to that re that song today, actually. Okay. Uh, it feels good. Okay. 
So, um, I have no idea how this is going to affect you in the present conscious physical world. Um, I guess, uh, look at your stress responses to things. Um, are you calmer or, um, are you just more able to deal with stress better? I'm not sure. Because yeah. this we'll see how this trip, to... I'm going away on uh, the 2nd to the 12th to Hawaii with my wife. Exactly. And it was our second trip out of Japan together. And it's we did another one with 10 days, and this is the 10 days too. And the last 10 days didn't work out well at all in a, in California. So I'm hoping this one we we don't get in the same fights we get into and, and everything's good. So let's see how unstressful I I can be and fully at ease and relaxed and not yeah, bothered and by my wife. <laughs> well, my mantra is, if I have a problem with someone, I work on myself. So Yeah. <laughs> and if only to make myself more robust and resilient mm. uh, to deal with things. Um, another thing I found really interesting is that when, when I get triggered with something, um, I ask my heart, how old am I? Yeah. And what this, uh, basically, because we have our inner children, you know, and, uh, you know, unresolved stuff from our past. And if we get triggered, if we ask our heart what age it is, and it, does, and, it and if it doesn't say, well, it's right now, it's, you know, the here and now, where we should be. If it says, oh, I'm six, then you know <laughs> <laughs> that there is a unresolved issue from age six, because you've got a little six-year-old kid running around in there. Um, or age eight, or age eleven, or whatever. Um, it's then you can then it helps you consciously just uh, kind of step to the side from this trigger and uh, go. Oh, okay, that's not me right now. That's me in the past, and I don't really need that right now. <laughs> and you'll make a note of it so you know that you need to go back to that. But um, it helps us realize that we are not our trapped emotions. Yeah. I also and find if we ask, who am I being right now? A lot of times it's biomimetically mimicking someone in our family. Like my grandma and grandpa used to fight all the time. Every yeah, time we went, on a trip, we went on a trip, they were always killing each other. So, so I, if I ask, who am I being right now? A lot of times I'm being my grandpa or I'm being my grandma. So yeah, just... you know, that's another way of looking at it, where <laughs> those energies, you, you absorb them, because you didn't know any better back then, yeah. you absorb them, and so they get triggered, and uh, when that happens, and you say, oh, my, my grandma or my grandpa or whatever, ask what age that is, is it your age or their age, because mm. it could also be, you know, if it says age, it's them and age six, you know, they have their unresolved issues from when they were children, yeah. from when they were children. And um, so you can kind of get an idea of where that started. And, you know, if it's inherited, I'm not quite sure what that would be, but, you know, maybe you'll... I, I know people have... Uh, they've had these visions of... They see all these heads behind them, you know, when it comes to a certain issue, meaning that this issue was inherited so many heads back, so many generations back. That's another way of looking at it. Um, just to give a, you know, an idea of, you know, what, uh, what is being affected and why me and, um, uh, what can I do? And you can even, you know, take your hand, your palm chakra and deactivate those energies. And you feel like, oh wait, I'm, I'm being age six and do 10. Okay. Over the governing meridian or someplace. And see if that doesn't deactivate it. It doesn't get rid of it, but because uh, you know these trapped emotions that are involved, these trapped energies, they have a diameter. You can measure that, and you know the bigger they are, the more influence they have. And you know you can have trapped emotions that are two meters across, and then it doesn't just affect you; it affects everybody in that range. But if you can deactivate it. Uh, with 10 or even deactivate it permanently with 20, um, then it goes down to, you know, little size where the influences are just that area instead of, you know, the rest of the 
world, you know, <laughs> whoever's sitting next to me. Um, so that's one way to deal with things that aren't ready to be released yet, but are still having an influence and being rather annoying. Cool. So, yeah, so I've been experimenting a lot and, you know, coming up with little tricks to deal with things uh, to help the body feel safer releasing stuff figure out why there's processing symptoms and there's processing symptoms because they don't have access to enough light. Um, you know, with the, whoever you're working on. And um, what do you do when it's not the right time to go through a session? You know, like you're sitting in an airport and having a fight. Um, <laughs> I bet you'd go, dang it, how old am I? Ah, oh, crap. Deactivate. <laughs> Bring that energy in so it is little and hopefully diffuse the situation a little bit. Okay, any other questions? No, I think we're good. Okay, so I hope that's helpful for everybody. Yes. And um, thank you for being a nice, having a nice, healthy, relatively speaking, HPA access. Yeah, I'm glad I did. Um, I wanted to t do a little commercial. Let me let me just plug in my 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 battery on my my thing is is juice is going down before I okay. uh, lose my charge. Hold on one second. I'm trying to plug it in, but I don't have enough light in this room. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little commercial at the end of this. <laughs> I just became a a doTERRA. Uh, do doTERRA. Uh, yeah, I just became. I uh, I've never I've never been into essential oils. I lo I know a lot of healers do, are into essential oils, and I never have been into that. I think one reason because I I haven't had a sense of smell for most of my adult life. Oh really? Yeah, and so I just one of my clients turned me on to DoTerra, and I I got I muscle test before I because I get lots of clients trying to turn me on to every goddamn thing, and I. <laughs> This one, I, I muscle tested, and I got a strong muscle test. I should do it. So I, I said, okay, sign me up. And I got I got the kit here, and I got it's got all these different oils here. And I've been starting to use the peppermint a lot lately. And I can start to smell it a little bit, which is cool. Well, do you, do you know there's, um, there's actually a bone in, uh, inside of your... Um, it's a bone that, oh, I can't remember the name of it. Oh, man, I can't remember the name of it. But it's a bone oh, that has... Oh, it looks like a Mardi Gras mask. Mardi Gras mask. I think it's called the, uh... It goes through the whole inner side of the head, right? It goes to the back of the head. It's, uh... Uh, what's that called? The holes in it that the nerves go through. Yeah, yeah. And that bone, if it's, if it's misaligned, it also, your, your lower back misaligned. Right. Yeah. And also, um, if there's infl inflammation there, mm -hmm. you know, this th kind of stops. Because, see, I have the same smell problem. I had a, uh, about 15 years ago, when was it, 1999? I think it was 1999, so it's been 17 years. I had a virus um, twice in the same month, really, really bad. And after that, I couldn't smell anymore. And, you know, and I had, at the time... You could still do research on the internet, though it wasn't as easy as now, but what I found was that uh, viruses can do that. If you have a really bad virus, it can like, deactivate these nerves and cause um, a like, perpetual inflammation in that area. And I found that uh, lots of uh, vitamin B forte, so all the vitamin Bs, and a lot of them helped. Um, but also when... Um, I can get my body in general in a, 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 a um, less inflammatory state, then I can feel, you know, I feel it and then I can smell better. Yeah. Because um, I know it sucks when you can't smell because then you don't know when food has gone off. <laughs> so it does help walking by Dixie clothes. Um, um, porta potties, sorry, in English. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call them in, in your area? Uh, Dixie, so in what? Germans they call Dix Dixie is the company and a uh, clo is a potty. Oh, uh, okay, well. It's is a, is a, is a portable toilet. It's a Dixie clo. Oh, uh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Dixie clo. 
So yeah, so I started smelling some of the oils. So I maybe I felt why I got a strong muscle test is these doTERRA oils oils will hopefully start helping my sense come back. So I'm starting to use a little bit here and there. And so I just thought I'd tell people on the end of this that if you're interested in doTERRA oil, doTERRA oils, I'm doing them now. Distributing them, and I have a website, and I'll put a link on here. You guys can check it out. Do you have lemon? Yes, I do have lemon right here. Try lemon as well. So peppermint lemon. Yeah. I'm going to actually the, put that on my nose right now. And so I've been using, I don't use doTERRA. I just use regular German um, pharmacy oils. Mm -hmm. um, and so I kind of, they're just, they're in my repertoire. And uh, I've had some good, um, good things happen using oils. So cool. So I, I actually did. I get an, I got a nose operation in 2007 because I had polyps in my nasal cavity, and okay. so for one, one week, uh, about a month, I was able to smell everything again, and it was really shocking because I didn't know how so many things had senses had a smell to them. So yeah. <laughs> everything I was like, wow, my computer has a sense of has a smell has a scent. Oh wow, my bell has a scent. I was smelling everything. I was just so and much. So does everybody's breath. Yeah, I could you smell smell things I never you knew. First teeth, bud. <laughs> <laughs> so it lasted a month, and then my polyp started growing back a little bit. That, but that was before I learned energy healing. That was back in two thousand and seven. Right. So I have overcame every possible problem in my body except my sense of smell and I, and I kind of never remember to work on it but someone it just reminded me to work on it again when my when this lady introduced me to doTERRA oils because I thought well the reason I haven't got into essential oils is I can't smell them so but now I'm starting to smell them a little bit so I, maybe they're helping well, so maybe cool maybe working on this HPA axis thing might help because, yeah you know that there's that uh, you know inflammatory stressors yeah that uh, throw can throw it off, and um, you know, and if it's been helped at least energetically, let me let me check one other thing. Okay. Um. Uh, does your HPA axis have any sort of shadow? It does. So what this means is that your inner children, some of your inner children, also have an HPA axis, either in part or whole. But after you've done all of this, um, the HPA axis of your inner children have been basically um, deactivated. Not put to dormant, but deactivated. So they're not, they still need to be worked on. You still need to work on your inner children to get them integrated. But the HPA axis parts of your inner children are, um, you know, the, the unhealthy parts, because inner children, by definition, pretty much unhealthy, um, they're deactivated, so they don't have the same influence that they did before, okay? And your inner children probably won't um, be triggered as much or even fully anymore because of this, because this is a really core thing, the HPA axis. So maybe this will help your nose so. uh, calm down enough to, to actually start smelling properly on a um, regular basis and also get to the core reason why. Well, I, fe I, I really know, I, I feel I know the core reason I've been working on it. So when I was uh, very, uh, how old was I? I was in junior high school or high school when I had... Okay. Uh, two younger brothers, a younger sister and a younger brother who were a year apart and my mom uh, had them using cloth diapers and I was assigned to the job of cleaning the cloth diapers and uh, oh, you can't. <laughs> and I would almost throw up every time because we, we were, it was in this laundry room with this huge sink and I would shit diapers, tons of cloth diapers were in the sink and I would have to wash them out in this hot sink right. and I would just die the smell was so bad and I, I think I made a decision at that time that I don't want to smell anymore, which is what, you, your mind is that powerful. It can right. pretty much block them out. So I blocked out sense of smell from then, then on. So I've been trying to work on going back and moving the past and all the other stuff I have to do around that issue, but it's a slow process. Well, hopefully it'll be, hopefully it'll be easier now. Yeah, okay. 
Because, I mean, that's a, a perceived stress. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely a, a perceived stress. And, you know, and, and the stuff is toxic to a certain degree. Uh, that's why we don't like it. It's because, you know, it's, you know, it's stuff that our body gets rid of because it's not, doesn't serve us. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so maybe this will help. I hope so. Yeah. Cool, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, give us updates here on your notes. Okay, cool, I will. <laughs> okay, so good. Let's let's talk in the future. I should do a little healing on you since you've already done two sessions on me and I haven't done anything on you. Would you like to do some now or would you like to do it in the future? We can maybe do a session. On, I'll do a video in the future. Well, I think in half an hour I've got another okay. appointment. Yeah, let's, let's do it in the future. Tell, yeah, tell me when you want me to work on you and I would like to make a video and put it up online. I'll do a session on you. Okie dokie. Cool. Just let me know. Okay. All right. So th that's all. Yeah. We'll see you guys next time. And have an awesome rest of the day. Okay. Well, there. Mine is uh, 1030 at night, so I'm going to bed.